It's not like that. It's not like that. Christianity is definite. This is the mystery of Christianity. This is the mystery. This is the genius. This is what the demons could not figure out. This is what the princes of this world. The Bible says if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They did not know what God wanted to arrive at. God wanted to arrive at this Christ in you. Hallelujah. You know, when we say Christ in you, some people think we're just repeating a religious cliche, you know, something that we say, you know, I'm more than a conqueror. <laughs> I'm an overcomer. It's, it's, it's a statement. You don't, you don't want to overcome by it. You just say it that you are an overcomer because it is good to say that you are an overcomer. But you don't know that you are an overcomer. And this is it. This is the genius of Christianity. This is the essence of Christianity. This is where Christianity is different from any other doctrine. Are you hearing me today? This is where Christianity is different from any other doctrine. Any other teaching. Christ in you. It's not about Christ is in my heart. No. It's not about it. It's the mystery. This is the mystery which has been hidden from ages. This is the mystery. What God wanted to accomplish. This is the mystery. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's idea was to reproduce himself. I don't know whether I say it again. God's idea was to reproduce himself. I will say it one more time. And that's why, when we say that Christianity is not a religion, when you understand what God's idea was, then you will know that Christianity was never meant to be a religion. It is men that made religion out of Christianity. But Christianity was Christ in you. What God wanted, God wanted to reproduce himself. Reproduce himself. Reproduce himself. Look at it. Let's read um, from 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's start from Verse 3. Yes. Look at it. You, you, you need to be... You see, when we read the Bible, we must be careful that we don't read the Bible and read our ideas into the Bible. We should read the Bible into our own ideas. Don't read your experience in life into the Bible when you're reading it. Don't read your limitations into the Bible. Don't read your unbelief into the Bible. Read the Bible as the Bible is. And read it as what it says. Remember, God understands English very well. <laughs> He's a master communicator. So don't, don't think that God made a mistake. You only think that God made a mistake because you don't have a revelation of what he is saying. Look at it. According as what? Let us try and read it together if you can see it. But I'll try and read it loud so that we can all hear it. According as his word, his divine power hath given unto us. Hath here means what? 
is a past tense. So he has already given it to us. And that means we are in possession of it. What are we in possession of? All things that pertain unto what? Life and godliness. He gave it to us by his divine ability. And so you must begin to see, realize what Christianity is. You must realize what, as a Christian, you must realize what you have received. You must realize what you are into. You must realize what has become your own. You must realize the way that God sees you. Look at it. That's not all. That's just the beginning. This one is an aside to what we want to actually see. Look, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And we manifest it through what? The knowledge of him that had called us to what? To glory. He has called us to glory and virtue. Virtue means what? Excellence. Let us not be. Let us not be. Let us not trivialize God's creativity. Don't trivialize yourself. God wanted to do something. Look at it. The next one. According as his divine power. Whereby are given unto us what? Exceeding great and precious promises. That by this we might be what? Partakers of what? His divine nature. Haven't, did he say you will escape? Haven't escaped. That means you have what? Escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. He said he has made us what? Partakers of his divine nature. Do you know what that means? You know, Pastor, the, 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 the Greek rendering would better have been that he has made us associates of the God kind. So we are associates we there's there's a, a heavenly pantheon there is mankind there's animal kind there's plant kind there is what god kind and so he has brought us to what to his class so once you are in christ and christ is in you you have come to the class of divinity are you following what i'm saying is this not what this scripture is saying? He has brought us to his level. He has brought us to his class. He couldn't do this with the children of Israel. He couldn't do this with the prophets of old. The Old Testament, you will see the prophet. What will happen? They will say the spirit came upon the prophet. And so the prophet will prophesy and talk as long as the spirit is upon him. But ours is not like that. God had something that he was looking at. God had something that he was planning right from the beginning. What was it? Is Christ in you the hope of glory? He said this was the mystery that was hidden from ages. But it is now revealed to us. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So God has brought us through Christ. He has brought us to his class. He has brought us to his level. He has brought us to, there is no difference in class between me and God. Why? Because it is no longer I that lives. But what? Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me? Say, I know who I am. I, are you following me? And so, you, you know, you, you need to, because sometimes we don't, we don't act out the word of God that we have received. We let our emotions, we let the things that we think, we let our experiences in life become our limitation. Meanwhile, God has clearly said it. He has said it. He said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. Why? Because they know not. Neither do they what? Understand. 
Psalm 82, verse 5. Based on the scripture, perhaps. This is Psalm 8, verse 5. Hallelujah. Look at no Psalm eighty two verse five. You have missed out the two. Look at it. They know not, neither what do will they understand. They walk on in what? In darkness. You see, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why? The next verse, verse 6. I have said that ye are what? Gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. But what will happen? He said, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Why? Because they know not neither do they understand. Brothers and sisters, we are a part of, we are associates of the God kind. You must, you must come to that realization. And you must come to that acceptance. Hallelujah. You know, they have Emmanuel, God with us. But we have passed Emmanuel. We have, I don't know whether he's now God in us. We are, we, we, there's, no, there's no difference. You know, many people, the only way they could relate with divinity was by actions. Because they were children of the flesh. And so, when the children of Israel, God knew that they were people of the flesh. And so he could only give them laws and rules and regulations. He couldn't, he couldn't put the law in their heart. He couldn't, put, he couldn't put himself into them. It wasn't possible. Because there was a nature that was against God. And there was a nature that was against God. And that nature was the nature of Adam. The nature of Adam. And Adam had sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. But now Jesus had come and come to and had come to take the punishment. The Bible said the soul that sinned, it shall die. So he had come to take away the punishment of sin. For who? For Christians. For Christians? For the children of Israel? No, for who? The whole world. For the whole world. And took away God's punishment. God's disdain. He took it away. He took. He, 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 he put the. The Bible says. The, our grievances. Our sins were laid upon him. And God turned his back on him. And he was punished. Fully punished for our sins. And so. It was possible to receive. Now. God had removed what was preventing him to have fellowship and have a relationship and have a dealing and to make man one with himself. It was because of his nature. He couldn't do it. He was planning to do it initially. Because the Bible said in the Garden of Eden, he said, he told Adam not to eat of the knowledge of the, good, of the tree of good and evil. Do you remember that? But was there another tree that he didn't want him to eat of? What was the name of that tree? The tree of what? Life. The tree of life. And so he put angels there to guard it and drove man away from the garden of Eden. And But now man knew good and evil. So he was going to be held responsible for his actions. But he was driven away. 
so that he couldn't eat of the tree of life. But there was a time that he was supposed to eat of the tree of life. And he will now become associate of what? Of the God kind. Brothers and sisters, these things are in the Bible. You are looking at me as if I made them up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh my, what is your Christianity to you? Is it a religion to you? What is Christianity to you? Christ in me. The hope of glory. Christ in me. God wanted to bring man to his class, to his level. And he accomplished it. And that's what the Bible says. John, thank you. John chapter, chapter 1. Let's read from verse 10. Oh, are you in this place? Hallelujah. He was in the world. And the world. Look at these words. He said he was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. I've often thought. If it was one of us. <laughs> the world was made by you. It doesn't even have to be the world. Your house that you are, your guy at the top. Once you reach there, how did the, the doesn't man know that our guy has come? Pa, pa. How is the man I'm supposed to see through the gates that is, you are the one? Our guy at the top has come. Hallelujah. So that kind of person, he now made all of us. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's say, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Very interesting. The next one. But what? But what? But what? As many as what? Received. To them gave he what? Authority. Gave them power to become what? The sons of God. And look at them. And to become the sons of, even to them that word, believe on his name. The next verse, that's what tells us that we have become associates. Which were born, not of what? Blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but what? Of God. I'm born of God. I'm born of God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I know who I am. I'm not a mistake. Uh, are you in this place? This is why we preach the gospel. This is why we shout. This is why we spend all our money trying to make sure that somebody hears it. Hear it in their language. Move it everywhere. Why? Christ in me. That's the solution to the problems of the world. That's the solution to violence. That's the solution to criminality. That's the solution to everything. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Glory in my work. Glory in my home. Glory in my job. Glory in my children. Glory in my city. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Brothers and sisters. This is what Christianity is about. Many do not know. So they walk on in darkness. And they shall die. Like men. And fall like one of the princes. How are you going to keep this in your heart? You're going to meditate on it. Say it to yourself again and again. God told Joshua. After he had given him such an onerous. Such a massive task. Of leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Joshua was a servant to Moses. Saw all the miracles that Moses did. But now Moses had died. Moses parted the Red Sea. Moses brought water out of a rock. Moses struck the rock. He brought out water. Struck, Moses did so. Put up a brazen serpent. Anybody that looked 
was healed. So many things that Moses did. And God would have thought that he would bring some heavy guy again from somewhere. But he came to Joshua, the servant of Moses. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. He said, I want you to take these people into the promised land. This thing that this great Moses could not do. Ordinary servant. He said, there's only one thing that you have. This is what is going to make you successful. This book of the law shall not depart from where? Not your heart. This book of the law shall not depart from where? I can imagine. He didn't even Maliku he, did, he couldn't speak in other tongues. Number one, he didn't have Christ in him. The Holy Ghost was not living in him. He will come and then after a while he will go again. But this time, the Holy Ghost has come to stay in us. He has taken his abode, his residence inside us. I have become one with God. If you look at me in the realm of the spirit, all you see is God. Did you hear what I said? If they look at you, did you do you remember the seven sons of Sceva? They wanted to cast out demons and they had seen Paul doing it. And so when they came, they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out. Because they had heard what Paul did. Paul would say, in the name of Jesus, come out. And the demons would come out. So they also thought, they went to the demons. And the demons, they listened to him. They listened to them. Uh, and they said, is it Jesus? We know. Paul, we know. Because he's like Jesus. He said, you, who are you? <laughs> and the demons descended on them and beat them mercilessly. But I'm different. Say, I'm different. Christ is in me. Yes, it's my hope of glory. Christ is in me. Christ is in me. When you look, that's my hope of glory. It's not something I'm looking forward to. It's already in me. Hallelujah. My victory is assured. My victory is assured. My victory is assured. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're in this place, and you do not know Jesus as the Lord of your life. This is your opportunity. It may never happen again. But don't let this opportunity pass from you. No matter why you came, how you came, what you, what you have been doing before you came. Today is your day. You see, as many as received him, as many as believed on his name, to them gave he what? Power to become the sons of God. This is the mystery. God wants to make you one with him. So when they look at you in the realm of the spirit, all they see is Jesus Christ. When God looks at you, all he sees is Jesus Christ. So this is the opportunity. And it's not by your behavior. By faith. By faith in his name. It's by grace. Through faith. Not of ourselves. Lest anyone should boast. I want you to say this after me and mean it with all your heart. Today is your day. Of coming to the class of divinity. Say it with me and mean it with all your heart. Say father. I come to you. In the name of your son. Jesus Christ. I believe with all my heart that he died for me. And that on the third day he was raised from the dead for my justification. And I confess with my mouth today that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the Lord of my life. From this day forward. 
I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. I have eternal life in my human spirit. My sins have been blotted out. And you will remember them no more. If you prayed that prayer, I want to assure you that God heard you. And I want you to take this second step of faith to solidify what you have already done. I want to pray for you a prayer, a special prayer of dedication. Very important. So I just want you to stand up on your feet. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. If you prayed that prayer, you want Christ in you. That is exactly what has happened to you now. Confirm it by standing up. He said, if you will confess me before men, I will confess you before the Father and his holy angels. Just stand up. God bless you. God bless you. Just stand up, more of you. God bless you. Just stand up. I want to pray for you now. Just stand up. Now, now, now is the time. Just stand up. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these ones that are boldly giving their lives to you. Confess you as the Lord of their lives. You said in your word, and all those who believe in your name, that they've come into fellowship with you, oneness with you, oneness with divinity. They have become associates of the God kind. And I pronounce and proclaim these ones, associates of the God kind. Partakers of your divine nature. Members of this heavenly pantheon. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We glorify your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is well with you. Satan has no more claims over you from today. Forward and upward will be your story. Whatsoever you lay your hands to do from today will prosper. And God's blessings is upon you. I bless you with the presence of God. I bless you with the glory of God. You will manifest his glory every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please don't sit down. Just take your Bibles, your bag, whatever you came to church with. Just take them and please just take them to follow our ushers. We have some gifts that we'd like to give to you from our man of God. So please just give them a big hand. Give them a big hand. Those of you watching us by television, also, we have numbers on your screen. Just call those numbers and we'll be able to deliver those materials to you that will help you grow in this new life. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you. We glorify your name. We thank you for your kindness, faithfulness. We thank you for your word that we have received into our spirits. And Father, we thank you. But this word will produce results in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a shout of victory. Amen. Say glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to bring out our offerings. But LFM is here. Love World Festival of music and arts give the lord a shout yes and we are going to give towards it we've been trying to model everybody should give mega we are doing a float we are doing costumes everybody will be a part of it if you want to be a part of it please come and see me or dickness mimi after the service hallelujah and if you want to be a part of the float, it's going to be in Lagos. We're going to be representing our zone. So we need to give towards it right now. So just get any envelope. Just put LFMA. It will be part of your partnership giving. Please, their hands up. Raise your hands so that everybody should be a part of it. Praise God. Hallelujah. And please just come and put it on the altar. Hallelujah. <laughs> 